The next session is workshop nine, hepatitis C, hepatitis B. The chairs are Dr. Barjas C. Sharma, Dr. Hiro, Hiro Yuki, Hirayuki Enomoto, and Dr. Tatsuya Kanto. Doctors, please. Hello. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Myself, Dr. B.C. Sharma, with Dr. Enomoto and Dr. Kanto, my co-chairpersons, welcome to you this session on Hepatitis B and Hepatitis C. In this session, we have five papers. First presentation, Dr. Jun from Japan. He will speak on usefulness of FIF4 index and ALT at one year of nucleoside analogs for predicting of hepatic cell carcinoma in chronic hepatitis B patients. Dr. Jun, please. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, the topic of my talk is uh, HIV4 index and ALT during hepatitis B treatment. Patients with chronic hepatitis B virus, uh, HIV infection, are at risk for liver cirrhosis and hepatocellular carcinoma, HCC. The incidence of HCC has been reported to be reduced with nucleotide or nucleoside analogs, NAs, but patients on such antiviral treatments are still at risk for HCC. The aim of this study was to evaluate the dynamics of a non-invasive non marker of liver fibrosis, the HIV-4 index, for predicting the development of HCC. Among a total of 882 chronically HIV-infected patients who were treated with NRAs, 472 patients without a history of HCC whose HIV-4 index was obtained at baseline and one year of treatment were evaluated for the incidence of HCC. This is a flowchart of patients. Among the NA-treated patients, uh, patients with incomplete baseline data were excluded, and also patients with a uh, patient lack of evaluation of HIV-4 at one year were ex excluded. And also patients with history of HCC and development of HCC in one year were excluded. Ex excluded. And among 472 eligible patients, uh, 28 patients developed HCC. This table shows the clinical characteristics at baseline. The median age uh, was 54 and uh, these NAs were used as initial treatment. The median DNA was 7.1 log, and uh, HIV genotype was, uh, genotype C was dominant, and uh, genotype C frequency was relatively higher, and the median FIFO index was 2.0. This plot shows uh, HIV-4 index in each patient from baseline to year five. The median of HIV-4 shows uh, HIV-4 decreased in the first year, but after that, the HIV-4 index was almost even. The blue line shows the HBE antigen negative patients, and uh, orange line indicates HBE antigen positive patients. So this graph shows uh, HB antigen positive patients showed lower HIV-4 index. And the first decline of HIV-4 index was larger in HBE antigen positive patients. This plot shows the HIV-4 index change of each patient from baseline. The x-axis indicates the HIV-4 index at baseline, and the y-axis indicates the HIV-4 index at uh, year, five to, well, year one to five. Then the, there are many dots below the y equal x line, indicating the HIV-4 index uh, decreased from baseline in each patient. And when the X line was plotted uh, with HIV-4 index at year one, the dots uh, located near the Y called X line 
indicating that the FIFO index was almost changed, not changed uh, after year one. This ROC curve uh, shows uh, HCC index at year five. FIFO index at year zero and uh, FIFO index at year one were compared. Then FIFO index at year one showed uh, higher AUC. So FIFO index at year one is more useful than year zero. And based on the ROC curve, the uh, cutoff of FIFO index was set to 1.58 at year one. This couple of my analysis shows uh, if the patient shows a uh, higher FIFO index, the higher uh, incidence of HCC is shown. Next, uh, we tested the FIFO change at baseline and year one. Patients were uh, classified into the four groups. Then, if the patient had uh, high fee four at baseline and also uh, high fee four at year one, the incidence of HCC was the highest. And interestingly, if the fee four index was high at baseline and low at year one, so this is uh, group C shows uh, there was no HCC development. This is a result of uh, univariate and multivariate analysis to analyze uh, baseline and year one factors associated with HCC incidence. Then uh, male and high ALT and high FIB4 at year one was selected for the independent risk factors. At last, we developed novel and simple score for the prediction of HCC incidence. At one year after the start of therapy, if FIB4 was high, the score was plus one. And if LT was high, the score was also plus one. And after the addition of these, the HCC risk score was uh, calculated as zero, one, or two. Very simple. And uh, we named this score HAL1 score. This couple of miles shows uh, if the LT was higher at year one, the cumulative, the instance of HCC was significantly higher. And uh, HAL1 score could stratify the HCC instance significantly. So interestingly, the HAL1 score zero patient, in the score zero patient, only one obese patient uh, developed HCC. And uh, we tested the usefulness of HAL1 score in HBE antigen positive patients and negative patients. So you can see the HAL1 score could stratify the risk, HCC risk in both uh, status of HBE antigen. Interestingly, ALT is a factor included in the FIL4 index but high ALT and high FIB4 both at year one of NA were independent factors for HCC development because ALT is calculated as a square root in the FIB4 formula. The weight of ALT in FIB4 is considered to be minimal. The reason for abnormal ALT after NA administration has not been clarified yet at this time. As a limitation, the data were collected locally in Northeast Japan, where the frequency of genotype B HBV is higher than in other areas of Japan. The usefulness should be validated in other areas. In conclusion, this study shows that chronic hepatitis B patients with high FIB4 index and high LT at year one of NA 
and high risk of HCC. And conversely, those with low FIB4 and low ALT at year one had a minimal risk. The FAL1 score can stratify the HCC risk and may be useful for individual HCC surveillance planning. These are collaborating hospitals. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Jun, for an excellent comprehensive presentation. Now this talk is, now abstract is open for uh, discussion. I invite questions and comments on this presentation. Dr. Any Sharma. question or comment, please? Dr. Sharma, uh, we have a uh, doctor who wants to ask a question in here. Can please, we... please, please. Yeah. Uh, thank you for uh, Dr. Tatenshi from uh, Tokyo. Uh, thank you for your excellent talk. Uh, the things are a bit complicated. As you mentioned, uh, the P4 index include the uh, ALT, ASD, age, and platelet count. And uh, also, after the NEA uh, administration, you may observe the uh, decreased ASD and ALT. Uh, as you mentioned, the ASD divided by square root of ALT may differ. Did you check the you know, change in uh, ASD and LT and also ASD divided by square root of LT after NA? Those three may change the differently. Uh, thank you for the question. So uh, I did not check the uh, change of LT and ASD individually. Uh, so I could not uh, respond to your Thank you. uh, comment uh, quickly, but uh, I'd like to check the yeah. status. I understand, because that, uh, you know, the importance of LT and LT may differ. And also, you know, uh, the ASD LT ratio is historically an indicator for liver cirrhosis. So the th things are complicated, but you can, you know, uh, discriminate these things by uh, some analysis. Thank you for the kind uh, advice. Thank you. Yeah, question one question me. I had, Dr. Jun. Can I? What can I ask was the? Yeah, please, please. What was the? Yes, sir. What was the percent reduction in FIB4 index score? in patients who develop HCC or in patients who develop, did not develop HCC. Percent reduction from baseline to one year. I mean, delta change. Delta change in FIB4 from baseline to one year among patients who develop HCC versus patients who did not develop HCC. Yeah, he's asking about the changes of FIB4, the percentage he wants to know, the changes of FIB4. Uh, when you compare the changes of FIB4 between the SSL Collins case and no Collins case, is there any difference or not? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, 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 thank you for the comment. Um, um, the change, change rate of FIB4 index uh, I think you asked, but uh, we did not check the changing rate of HIV-4 after the NA treatment. So, but uh, I, know, I think the change also uh, important uh, to predict the HCC. So I'd like to try such an analysis. Thank you for the comment. Okay, have you tried to examine the uh, HB correlated antigen changes? In the same study, similar study, the Toronto Mon Hospital has already published about the similar study about the changes uh, from baseline to one year. It's significantly important for the prediction of SSL occurrence. After. Have you tried that? Uh, thank you for the uh, question. Um, I'd like to analyze the core antigen, correlated antigen, but um, this is a uh, multi center study, and uh, there were lack of correlated antigen tests. So I can't uh, the 
anal analysis exactly. So I'd like to collect such data and uh, test in the near future. Okay, thank you. No further questions, Professor Sharma. Yeah, no further questions or comments. We go on to next paper presentation. Thank you, Dr. Jun, for an excellent presentation. Our next speaker is Dr. Mada, Dr. Masa Jumi, and he will speak on MXB induced in mitochondria by interferon inhibits HBV replication by activation of rig signaling pathway. Dr. Masa Jumi, please. Please start, sir. Dr. Masa Jumi. I'd like to talk about the relationship between MXB and HPV replication. Hepatitis B virus is an incomplete double-stranded cyclic DNA virus with an envelope of hepatoma virus and is transmitted from human to human mainly through blood. The virus particles form an envelope composed of three different molecular weight envelope protein, large, middle, and small s, and a lipid bilayer. The, the envelope proteins are called HPS antigen because they cover the surface of the virus. Inside the virus particle is the core protein, HPC antigen, the core particles of viral genome and the nucleocapsid. These viral particles are called the DAME particles and the, the incomplete ones, which, one, which are not all aligned, are called hollow particles. Hepatitis B virus adheres to the hepatocyte surface and binds to the sodium tauroclate coransporting polypeptide NTCP, causing membrane fusion and entry into the cell. The, the HPV genome is then released by deshelling and repaired in the nucleus to a fully double-stranded closed ring CCC DNA. Messenger RNA is transcribed using CCC DNA as a template from which various proteins are translated. The background of the research. Complete elimination of CCC DNA from hepatocyte is necessary to the cure HPV infection, but it is difficult with nucleus acid, nucleic acid analogs. It has been reported that interferon alpha is effective in the specific denaturation of CCC DNA, but it has several side effects. Various interferon-stimulated genes, ISGs, are induced by interferon alpha, and it has been suggested that MXB protein, a member of dynamine family, may act in an in, in inhibitory effects against HPV, but the detailed mechanism is unknown. Recent studies have reported that MXB is involved in mitochondrial morphogenesis and may play a role in the HPV inhibition by activating the mitochondria mediated immune in, innate immune system. Mixovirus resistance, MX proteins are induced by type 1 and type 3 interferons and form multimers. MXA has been reported to inhibit various viruses, including HPV. The, the antiviral activity of MXB has been reported in HIV-1 and herpes viruses, but has been not been fully elucidated. Although HPV suppression by MXB has recently been reported, the mechanism is unknown. Viral replication occurs via the RIGY sensor molecule and the mitochondrial antiviral signaling protein MABUS pathway but MABUS signaling requires aggregation on mitochondria. We hypothesized that hepatitis B virus could suppress mitochondria mediated innate immunity, which may be restored by expression and ad administration of MXB. We aim to elucidate the mechanism of HPV suppression of MXB and to conduct basic studies for appl application to new antiviral therapies. We examined change in viral particles in cultural supernatants and intracellular viral proteins by knockdown of MXB or forced expression of MXB. We also examined change in the rig eye signaling pathway and downstream interferon expression after poly IC stimulation. 
and examine mitochondrial morphology and mitochondrial protein localization using confocal microscopy. We will, we will extract RNA using liver biopsy tissue and compare the expression levels of MXP messenger RNA in patients with chronic hepatitis B to those with acute hepatitis B and chronic hepatitis C. Knockdown of MXB in HPV expression cells resulted in increased expression of envelope protein L, M, and S, HBS. Furthermore, HBS antigen released from HPV expression cells was significantly increased by knockdown MXB. Immunoprecipitation with anti HPS antibody and measurement of HPV DNA levels by real time PCR also showed an increase in DNA particles due to MXP knockdown, although not as significant as HPS antigen. Measurement of sucrose density gradient centrifugation viral particle density showed an increase in DNA particles with an envelope with MXP knockdown similar to the result of immunoprecipitation. These results suggest that MXB function to re regulate HPV replication mainly by suppressing envelope protein expression. Using confocal microscopy, we observed the change in mitochondrial morphology and MABIS by knockdown of MXB and found fragmentation and swelling of mitochondria and reduction of MABIS cluster. Although the change in MABIS aggregation due to MXP knockdown was not discernible by conventional Western blotting, a decrease was observed by SDDH agaroscale electrophoresis. Comparing the change in required downstream signaling after poly IC stimulation, phosphorylation of TBK1 and IRF3 was suppressed after MXP knockdown. When compared by a messenger RNA quantification for its downstream interferon expression, IFN1 and IFN2 and 3, which were markedly elevated by poly IC after eight hours, were significantly suppressed by MXP knockdown. These results suggest that MXP is required for efficient signaling down downstream of Rigui and may be involved in promoting the fo formation of MABIS cluster or on mitochondria. Induction of MXP expression could be therapeutic against HBV. There were MXP messenger RNA levels in patient liver tissue and various laboratory tests. In terms of MXP level by disease, CHC was slightly higher than CHB, although the difference was not significant. Comparison of each laboratory test item with MXB level in CHC, CHB showed a positive correlation with HBS antigen levels and albumin levels. This suggests that MXB is more likely to be induced by interferon when HBS antigen needs high. Decreased HBS antigen in the natural course may lead to MXB decline, resulting in diminishing innate immune and possibly preventing HBB elimination. It was suggested that if MXB levels can be maintained, HBB may become controllable. For albumin, the trend was similar to the variation of HBS antigen, although the difference was not significant. This was thought to be related to decrease in HBS antigen and the progression of fibrosis with aging. Based on the results of this study, MXB might be required for the, the effective innate immune response against HBB. MXB induction can be a treatment strategy for HPV infection. It is required to verify that MXB induction is suppressed by HPV using cultured cells and to examine the cause of this suppression by expressing each HPV protein se separately. Infection of HPV to primary human hepatocytes and following knockdown and induction of MXB is planned. Screening of compounds capable of induction MXB by Ripstore reporter assay together with existing therapeutic agents is planned. It is conclusion. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Masajumi, for an excellent presentation, a landmark study.
uh, the, the talk, the presentation is open for discussion. I invite questions and comments on this presentation. Please. Yes, we have one question from the audience. Uh, my name is Jun Arai from IH Medical University. Thank you very much for beautiful data. So you pointed out the importance of MXB to suppress uh, FGBP replication. So I guess in your figure, uh, MXB, a kind of interferon stimulator gene, is suppressive effect to regulate uh, proliferation. Would it be possible to regulate CCC DNA as well? Thank you for your question. Uh, Is it possible to regulate CCDNA by the... Okay, this is the time limitation. Please discuss in the floor. Okay. Professor Sharma, uh, do you have any question from you? No, sir. No, sir. Thank you. Okay. Now, 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 for uh, other presentations, I hand over to my co chair persons, please. Please ask it again and slowly, please. Do you have any other comments? Or don't you have? No. No? No. OK. So, Doctor, uh, you have a planning to discover about the compounds uh, from the Tohoku University. Uh, and is that the compound uh, the similar uh, to the other kind of drugs? Or the, uh, that is a very new kind of compounds? Do you have any information? Or are you still searching? Thank you for your question. Uh, I was still researching this. It, it just... OK, let's uh, uh, discuss it later. Okay. Oh, OK. <laughs> Please, Dr. Uh, Inoue. I'm a uh, co-author of this paper. So uh, the compound is the compound consists of a uh, new compound and also uh, known compounds. So many, many kinds of compounds were like, included. So we'd like to test uh, whether the, <laughs> so sorry, we'd like to test the uh, compounds to stimulate the uh, signal or so. Thank you. Uh, we're looking forward to hear that. that. OK, thank you, doctor. I'm sorry. Yes. OK, Professor Sharma, we're going to take over the chairing. Is that yeah, OK? Please, please, my co-chairperson will take over. Please. And the third presenter is uh, Dr. Dr. Mino uh, from National Center for Global Health and Medicine. And Dr. Mino, please start. Thank you for your invitation. Uh, I'm so much grateful for this opportunity to make my presentation. And uh, today I'd like to talk about uh, HCV uh, clearance uh, improved uh, amino acid imbalance in patients with hepatitis C. The COI is shown in this slide. Uh, background, uh, HCV infection induces uh, metabolic disorders in amino acids uh, through the progression of uh, hepatic fibrosis and aggravation of uh, liver function. Uh, HCV clearance improves uh, hepatic function following uh, DAA therapy. Uh, however, uh, that the impact of uh, antiviral treatment uh, 
on the imbalance of free amino acids in HCV patients and remains unclear. So the aim of this study is to elucidate the relationship between amino acid imbalance, and hepatic uh, uh, function, and fibrosis after DA therapy. Uh, we collected uh, data from a total of uh, 201 HCB patients into hospitals. Uh, as shown in this chart, uh, 114 and uh, sorry, uh, as shown in this uh, 186 uh, cases include uh, 114 non HCC patients and uh, 72 uh, HCC treated patients. Uh, uh, all no, uh, all non HCC patients uh, had uh, DAA treatment, and uh, on the other hand, uh, the one side of the uh, HCC pa treated patient had DAA therapy. Uh, we compared uh, laboratory data uh, uh, before and after treatment, uh, including amino acids uh, levels, and in non HCC patients, uh, we also evaluated histological findings. Uh, before DAA treatment. Uh, from this slide, uh, we show results. Um, baseline characteristic of these patients are shown here. Uh, we can see that, uh, that there was a statistical significance uh, between the non-HCC and HCC-treated patients at uh, sex, age, and total value being uh, RB, platelet, PT, and RB. Uh, this indicating that uh, HCC group had uh, lower func liver function uh, compared to the uh, non-HCC group. In this chart, uh, we show the results of uh, the DA therapy uh, among non-HCC patients. Uh, all 114 patients uh, achieved SVR, and almost 70% patients improved, uh, improved uh, fissure ratios. Then uh, we divided these patients uh, into four groups uh, based on the progression of fibrosis as determined histologically. Uh, higher score uh, groups uh, such as F3 and F4 showed a major improvement in its features ratio uh, compared to uh, the lower uh, score, score groups. Then uh, we focused on correlations uh, between Fisher's ratio and fibrosis markers and liver function. And the result is uh, the changes uh, in Fisher's ratio uh, had a significantly uh, negative correlation uh, with the changes in fibrosis markers uh, such as M2BPGI and fibrosis 4 index and APRI. And, the change of uh, Fisher ratio was also negatively correlated with the change of uh, RB. Uh, to clarify the relationship uh, between uh, fibrosis markers and amino acids, uh, we analyzed uh, the amino acids uh, of Fisher ratio. Uh, interestingly, uh, the changes of tyrosine and uh, phenylalanine uh, were positively correlated uh, with the dose of uh, uh, M2BPGI, uh, whereas uh, BCAA changes were not. And uh, the changes of RB uh, score also showed uh, a similar tendency and positively correlated with uh, tyrosine and phenylalanine. Next, uh, we show the result of uh, HCC treated patients. Uh, 24 cases uh, received DA therapy, and 22 cases uh, achieved SVL. Uh, similar to the non-HCC cases, uh, Fisher ratio improved uh, in SVL group, uh, whereas uh, no, uh, in no tr treatment group, uh, the ratio decreased. And in SBR uh, patients, uh, the changes of Fisher ratio uh, tended to be uh, negatively uh, correlated with the change of RB. Uh, and uh, the uh, changes of uh, tyrosine and uh, phenylalanine also uh, tended to be, uh, have positive correlation 
uh, with RB changes. Uh, these results were uh, consistent with uh, non HCC patients. Uh, furthermore, uh, we evaluated the duration uh, of time uh, after SVR, and uh, it was uh, positively uh, correlated with uh, Fisher's ratio. And discussion uh, about uh, SVR and amino acid imbalance. Uh, clearance uh, of uh, HCV uh, led to an improvement of uh, amino acid imbalance, uh, mainly tyrosine and phenylalanine, uh, but, uh, particularly uh, in cases with uh, advanced fibrosis and uh, curably uh, treated HCC. And the cross uh, association of HCV infection uh, with uh, amino acid metabolism is uh, assumed. And uh, improvement uh, of liver function and fibrosis uh, after SVR may be associated with uh, tyrosine and phenylalanine. And conclusion, uh, clearance of HCV uh, led to an improvement of amino acid imbalance. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your presentation. Now, I'm going to open to question. Is there any comment or question from the audience? Okay, I have some questions. Uh, you showed that uh, HCV infected patients you studied and uh, show the improvement of amino acid imbalance. And uh, you mentioned that uh, the change is uh, correlated, re related to the HCV infection. But uh, I think uh, if uh, HCV infected patients receive the DA3 uh, uh, nucleotide acid treatment, uh, I think uh, improvement of liver condition may also induce the recovery of amino acid improvement. Uh, okay. Do you think the, the yeah. amino acid change of amino acid imbalance is specific to the HCV infection? Or, uh, or that can be uh, observed in other HCV uh, patients. Uh, thank you for the uh, good question. Uh, it is very important, and uh, and unfortunately, uh, uh, we also uh, we just uh, uh, analyzed uh, in uh, analyzed amino acids data in uh, only in HCB uh, patients, and uh, so we did not uh, uh, show uh, today an answer. Thank you. Is there any question? Okay. I have only one question. Uh, uh, you showed that uh, uh, HCV is related to various metabolic disorders. Uh, if you have uh, any data in, uh, in addition to the amino acid imbalance, uh, including uh, glucose metabolism or such uh, other metabolic disorders. Uh, Do you have that uh, data regarding the improvement of different uh, another uh, metabolic thank, factor? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, we, we have uh, a little data about uh, glucose metabolism. And so uh, there are no uh, relationship. Uh, we, uh, we can't, uh, uh, we, don't, we don't have any data. Uh, so. Uh, but uh, there are a, a lot of reports uh, in, about uh, HCB uh, after DA therapy. So uh, I will check and, uh, my laboratory data. And uh, if the data is uh, some uh, good, uh, or <laughs> some good I, I will uh, present okay. next time. OK, I'd like to anticipate your new data. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. If possible, I'd like to know the reason who did not do DA treatment uh, in HCC patients. Did, uh, 
other, uh, those people, Ricardo, HCC, and uh, did not have chance to receive uh, the A or some other reason? Mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much. Uh, oh, most of the patients uh, had to be uh, treated, uh, uh, HCC treat, uh, treatment, uh, so there is no chance uh, to have, uh, take medicine to, uh, to, um, uh, about DAA. Okay, thank you. Okay, is there any other question? Okay, thank you for your presentation. Thank you very much. The next speaker is Dr. Tomoko Tanaka from Second Department of Eternal Medicine. University of Fukui. Please start. Thank you for uh, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining me today. I am delighted to present my research on clinical and imaging features of hypervascular de novo hepatocellular carcinoma after HCV eradication. This is COI. To provide context, Prenopartic nodules in hepatobiliary phase hypoimpensity of EOB MRI is a risk factor for HCC after SVR. Further, it all reported that the presence of non hypervascular hypointense nodules depicted by EOB MRI before DAA therapy is a strong risk factor for the development of de novo HCC after SVR. However, de novo hepatocarcinogenesis has been observed in some cases, and the pathogenesis of hepatocarcinogenesis after SVR is unclear. Here, we prevent EOB, present EOB MRI findings of nodules that appeared after SVR and showed hypervascularization. A 70-year-old man with hepatitis C-related cirrhosis was treated with DAA and follow up after achieving SVR. 40 months after SVR, a 5mm hepatobiliary phase hypointense nodules without arterial phase hyper-enhancement was found in S4, but not in the early phase. On EOB taken 15 months after discovery, the nodules were stained in the early phase and had a more prominent low signal in the hepatobiliary phase and had increased in size 8 mm. The main objectives of our study were to evaluate hypervascular HCC after SVR and investigate factors involved in hepatocarcinogenesis. We identified 90 patients underwent follow-up EOB MRI after SVR, resulting in 39 hypervascular HCC being reviewed. HCC after SVR were divided into two groups. The multi-step group showed perennial protect nodules in hepatobiliary phase hypointensity of EOB MRI before hypervascularization that new group did not show. In the next, study participants were consisting of 65 patients, uh, chronic hepatitis C patients underwent long-term multiple follow-up EOB MRI, resulting in 212 hypervascular nodules being retrospectively reviewed. The nodules were divided into two groups. The first groups in included nodules observed before SVR. The second group included the nodules observed after SVR. Firstly, we investigated characteristics of hepatocarcinogenesis after SVR. This figure shows the time course of uh, SVR, a discovery of nodules, and hypervascularization 
of 39 hyperpascal HCC after SVR, 56.4% was in the multi-step groups, and 43.6% was in the new groups. The median time from SVR to occurrence hyperpascal HCC it was 79.4 uh, days and significantly longer than the nodules observed before SVR. Clinical and imaging characteristics of the multi-step group and the new group were examined. Uh, fat containing regions were significantly lower in the new group than in the multi-step group. The median time from SVR to occurrence hypervascular HCC in the new group was significantly longer than the group of nodules observed before SVR. Fat containing regions were significantly longer in the new group than in the multi step group. In the next, we investigated with a temporal relationship between the appearance of preneopathic nodules and SVR is associated with incident HCC. Cumulative incidence of hypervascularization from the appearance of nodules showed no significant differences in nodules observed before SVR and nodules observed after SVR. Cumulative incidence of hypervascularization one, three, five years of nodules observed before SVR is 7.1%, 14.3%, 21%. 0.4%, and the one of the those observed after SVRs is 19.6%, 37.0%, Cumulative incidence of uh, hyperparticulation from SVR showed similarly no significant difference in those observed before SVR those observed after SVR. Cumulative incidence of hyperpascalization showed no significant differences in nodules observed before SVR, nodules observed after SVR. Collectively, we found that 40% of newly developed hyperpascular HCCs after SVR did not have perennial plastic nodules. Even if there were no preneoptic nodules before SVR, careful surveillance may be required. This is the end of the presentation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for the presentation. Is there any question from the audience? Yeah, I, I'm Dr. Sharma. I have one question. Pre neoplastic hypodense lesions or hypodense nodules, how many patients develop these pre neoplastic lesions after SVR before developing hypervascular HCC? Am I clear? After SVR, how many patients developed pre neoplastic nodule before developing? Hypervascular HCC. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, what you mean is uh, hypervascularization uh, nodules observed before SVR? No, no. no. Once the SVR, there is no pre, -no pre neoplastic, before SVR, there is no nodule. But after SVR, first the patient developed nodule and then hypervascular lesion. How many such patients were there? That is, before hypervascular HCC, they developed a nodule after SVR. Yes, sorry, what, what do you mean? Uh... I mean, SVR obtained, then a nodule, and then a hypervascular HCC. How many patients had this sequence? Sequence, uh, how many? Uh, the new group. Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry, I, I can't understand your question clearly. Hi, no. so. 
はいあのハイポバスキュラーが 1cc だと思ってらっしゃるんですよだからハイポインテンシティノジュールって日本人にしか通じない概念でそれがその全顔病変っていうのも別にバイオプシーで見てるわけじゃないからお約束なんですけどこういうインターナショナルなセッションでやると通じないんですよだから、so, Dr. Sharma understand that the hypo intense nodule on the hepatobiliary phase of EOVM indicate the hypovascular HCC, but、uh, it is not uh, 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 confirmed by pathology, so it's only、uh, imaging diagnosis. No, yes, very small question. After obtaining SVR, before developing hypovascular HCC, how many patients have developed nodules? After SVR, high point dense nodules. High point dense nodules がそのもともとなかったのが出てきた人はどのくらいかって、何人ぐらいかって。High point dense nodules がなかったのが出てきたの。ああ、そう、high point dense。Okay, please carry on. Please carry on. Sorry, uh, I try to, uh, try to check uh, your. Uh, suggestion to for by next time. Thank you for your. Yeah,、comment. please carry on further discussion, sir.、Uh, I request my co chair persons to carry on the further discussion, Dr. Thank you for the comment. Okay, is there any other question? Yeah, I, yeah, I have one question.、Uh, you mentioned that. Uh, uh, Newly appeared region、uh, have low fat containing region.、Uh, is there any、uh, meaning related to the clinical findings?、Uh -huh. I'd like to know the clinical、uh, role of the low, low, low fat accumulation.、Uh, thank you for the comment. Uh, I think uh, the reason why、uh, the market Uh, the fat containing region is low.、Uh, the、uh, portal, ve portal vein artery is decreasing, and、uh, tumor vessel tumor vessel is not still increasing. So this process is more、uh, more frequency at、uh, multi step group. So the New group is this process is very short, in my opinion. Thank you for your comment. Thank you. Is there any comment? Okay, thank you for the presentation. Thank you for... Okay, we are going to invite the final speaker,、uh, Dr. Rie Goka、uh, from Japan. If you're ready, please. Thank you for your、uh, introduction. So, today I'm going to talk about the recurrence and the prognosis of HCC treated with a radiofrequency ablation in a hospital. So, in a hospital, we usually perform a laparoscopic radiofrequency ablation for HCC as a local regional therapy. In this study, we investigated the Uh, prognosis and recurrence in patients with primary HCC, and also examined、uh, the risk of alcohol consumption. So, here shows the three issues of this study.、Uh, first, we investigate the recurrence and the prognosis in patients with HCV.、Uh, sometimes we experience the occurrence of HCC even though、uh, patients obtained SVR. So, we defined these cases as、uh, SVL HCC. And on the other hand, patients who obtained SVL after treatment of HCC were defined as、uh, HCC SVL.、Uh, from that point of view, we compared the recurrence and the prognosis between、uh, SVL HCC and HCC SVL. As a second issue, We investigate the recurrence and prognosis between patients who obtained SVL. 
regardless of timing and other etiology. And the last one, uh, as a third issue, we evaluated the impact of alcohol consumption on recurrence and the prognosis. So here shows the participants of our study. Uh, finally, 335 patients newly diagnosed HCC treated with uh, LRFA from January uh, 2014 to December 2022 were recruited. And in this study, most of patients' uh, child abuse score was in A, and there was not so much variation in this study, which might be a good point of this study. And look at this graph. And about half percent of these patients were suffering from HCP. And in the HCP group, about 50% of patients had obtained SBL before HCC was found. And for some reasons, HCV was not eliminated in 20% of patients with HCV. Now, uh, here shows the background of alcohol consumption. According to the medical interview, we divided patients into uh, four groups. On, depends on the frequency of alcohol intake. In the uh, group of alcohol, about 20% of patients were able to quit drinking, while 75% of them were unable to quit drinking. Now let's move on to the results. First, we compared the recurrence and the prognosis in between patients with SVL and other those with the non-SVL. And prognosis in patients with SVL was significantly better than uh, those with non-SVL. This result could be the same as previous reports. Um, then, what about in between patients who occurred HCC after SVL and patients who obtained SVL after uh, treatment of HCC? And actually, there was no difference between SVL, HCC, and HCC, SVL. The timing of SVL uh, was not seemed so important. Now move on to the second issue. Here shows the recurrence rate of other etiology compared with SVL. As you could see, nausea and alcohol group had significantly higher recurrence rate than SVL group. And here shows the OS. There was no difference in prognosis between SVL and the other groups. Patients in alcohol group tended to have a worse prognosis than the uh, SVL group. The last one, I just mentioned that uh, patients in alcohol group had a high rate of recurrence and tended to have a poor prognosis. So I had thought that uh, uh, alcohol intake might have some impact on recurrence and the prognosis of HCC patients. So, in a group of SVL compared to the patients with no alcohol intake, recurrence rate in alcohol drinkers was significantly higher. And this slide shows the comparison between the patients who had uh, quitted drinking alcohol and uh, current drinkers in the alcohol group. There was no significant difference between the uh, ex-drinkers and the current drinkers. But patients who abstained from alcohol after HCC treatment uh, tended to have a better prognosis than uh, current drinkers. So this is a summary of the results of our study. In the study in patients who were performed LRFA, there was no difference in recurrence and prognosis once SVL was achieved 
regardless of uh, whether the patient was treated before or after HCC treatment. So this study was consistent with previous reports. And talking about the alcohol, whether alcohol intake has a risk factor of recurrence or prognosis in patients with HCC has still under debate because it depends on the sex, ages, and genetic risk variants. I mean, uh, it, it must be quite different between uh, Asian people, including Japanese, or European, or American people. But generally speaking, people such as men, elderly people, and those with uh, abnormal ALT should have abstained from uh, drinking alcohol. So limitations are shown in this slide. The biggest limitation is the definition of alcohol intake. In this study, frequency of alcohol intake was evaluated based on a medical interview, but uh, amount of pure alcohol should have been assessed. So we should keep on investigating these kind of issues. So this is a conclusion. That's all for my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Goka. And uh, thank you for summarizing about the data of the RFA, after RFA and the prognosis and the recurrence rate of the SCC. Oh, we have two questions. The first. Yeah. Uh, One question, Dr. Uh, Sharma. Dr. Sharma. Dr. Sharma, please. Yes. Uh, we have a question from the audience you, here. Uh, you showed the recurrence <laughs> prognosis, same in SVR HCC versus HCC SVR. However, I wish to know the comparison of time period interval on recurrence of HCC after SVR in both the groups. I'm sorry. What are the time period of development of recurrence of HCC after SVR in SVR HCC group in comparison with time period for development of recurrence of HCC in HCC SPR group. So could you be that please? I couldn't get it. Oh, Professor, get Sharma. Professor Sharma. Professor uh, Sharma. We have a, uh, two doctors here if we want to ask. Can we take their question first? Yeah, of course. Okay. Please, please, please. All right. Please. Please. That is from Tokyo. Uh, thank you for your excellent talk. Uh, you show that uh, SCV, SVR and uh, SVRCC is the same. However, you need to uh, you need to look at the uh, immortal time bias in the patient uh, patient in uh, uh, SCC SVR case because that uh, you know survival between the uh, primary treatment and the achievement of SVR is guaranteed in that case. So that there is an important bias. Actually, there might be a small difference between the groups. SVR, HCC is better, uh, has a better survival. Thank you for your suggestion. I'll put it into consideration. Thank you. My name is Please. Jun Ari from Aichi Medical University. Thank you very much for your beautiful clinical data. So in terms of the pro progression-free survival, the interval of the graphic evaluation is really important and influential. Yes, so did yes. you compare the uh, between the SBL SCC and HCBS SBL? Actually, I haven't had data such as, uh, so, uh, but so I, I have the same uh, opinion as you. We haven't, uh, it's the uh, interval is very important, I think. So I put it into consideration, yeah. thank you. Can I ask one more question? Or the time sure, brief, brief question. Yeah, brief question, yes, yes. To get the better outcome for the patients, mm. when the finding of the new HCC, to keep the better, you know, the uh, RB score or child poo is really imp important. So did you also check the ex-drinker and a current drinker at the time of the recurrence of HCC? Yes, I. Yeah, I, that's the, I have the same opinion. So, but today I don't have the data, but I'll check the, uh, I, I'm thinking I need that kind of data. So thank you for good. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you.
Yes, I think the last question is really important to analyze. Pardon, yes. please. Okay, Professor Sham, I'm sorry to take your question because the time is uh, limited. Okay. It's all right, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. Please, please. Okay. So thank you very much for participation, and uh, I want to close this session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, chairs and lecturers.